Uh, yeah, my name is Darcy Lunn. I'm a current student here at ICU doing a, a Master's in Peace Studies. And uh, before coming to ICU, I was 16 years working as a practitioner in many countries around the world in aid and development, but also continually learning from, um, from people around the world, which certainly had a huge impact on, on my life and the way that I live it. Um, so I wanted to start here with this question. I, I give many presentations around the world to many schools and universities, and this is where I usually start my conversation, is what is a global citizen? And it's a very vague term, and there is no one answer, but I think the most important thing is to be thinking of an answer. What, what do these two words mean to me? And what does that mean to my life, the way that I live, and the things that I do, that I get to choose to do? Now for me, uh, I grew up in Australia, as you can tell from my, my beautiful Australian accent. Uh, but I, I came to Japan when I was 18 years old and worked in a bakery. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not sure why, but that was just the opportunity that came. But it's, it changed my life because I saw that the world wasn't just the small city that I lived in in Adelaide in Australia, that there were many things out in the world. I didn't grow up thinking that I would work in a bakery in Japan, but when I did, it meant that my horizons were much wider. And so since then, I've been extremely fortunate to travel to more than 90 countries around the world um, in many different places and doing many different things. Uh, we were talking before about the Mongolian Yubok Ming. Uh, that's, that's kind of myself, except I didn't live in Mongolia for so long, just for two months. Um, but yeah, in that time, I've worked with many organizations on social justice, environmental justice and global justice in many different capacities. But I, I'm absolutely convinced that we are all global citizens. But the biggest question is this one, is how can we be a good one? What are the things that we can do within our own power that have a positive impact on people and the planet? And this is, this is what I look at a lot. Um, and so this is why I created an idea of uh, Teaspoons of Change. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this particular bridge. Yep, I'm from Adelaide, but this is in Sydney. Um, and this is where I, I start with people to be an active and effective global citizen. Is on one side of the bridge, we have good people doing good things. And this is the beauty of a day like today, is that we get to learn more about those good people doing good things, which is fantastic. But on the other side of the bridge, we have people who want to do good things, or maybe need to do good things. Uh, university administrations, us individually, all these sorts of things. So what, often what I do is try to be the bridge, not the Sydney Harbour Bridge, but any kind of bridge, to connect people who are doing good things with those who want to do good things or need to do good things. So it's a very simple thing to be an active and effective global citizen. Um, and we're very lucky to have this set of 17 goals, the Global Goals for Sustainable Development. And there are a significant change from the Millennium Development Goals because there are far more um, of them dedicated to the planet as well, and this idea of sustainability. But when I go and you know, present to five-year-olds and to 85-year-olds, they're always like, okay, that's pretty cool, that's a big plan for the whole world to achieve by 2030, but where do I start? What can I do personally? And this is why I created Teaspoons of Change. So these are our personal choices, decisions and actions that have a positive impact on people and the planet. Yeah. So teaspoons are small, but these are just the small things that we can do in our daily life. And so this is where I say, okay, we, you know, we can't solve all of the world's problems tomorrow, but we can start with doing some small things with ourselves today. And so my teaspoon of change was from living in Ethiopia for, for many years and other places around the world, was to learn from the world. And then how did I do that in my daily life? So I constructed a tiny house in New Zealand that's uh, built on an old boat trailer, which was a bit of a nightmare, but uh, I, don't, I don't advise building on boat trailers. They're <laughs> very difficult to, to work with. But, um, but this is a self-sufficient tiny house in New Zealand, solar panels, water capture, uh, compost toilet, these sorts of things. And so I learned all of this from the amazing people and cultures that I'd been in. People who didn't get to choose simplicity, but certainly, um, ideals of their life that I had learned from. And um, New Zealand, the thing for me was about just the way that I present myself in the world. What are my teaspoons of change? What are the small things that I'm doing? 
Um, this is a relatively big thing. Not everyone needs to live in a 10 square metre house. We, we have some people with us today who have built their own tiny houses just, just here in Chorfu as well. Um, but it's, you know, it, it creates that idea. Now for me, teaspoons of change, turning off a light switch, it actually doesn't mean much at all. <laughs> but for me, it's the, the mindset and that you care about the world enough to consciously make these choices. And as university students and university administrations and governments and these sorts of things, this is what we need to instill in the people around us, is that the mindset matters. Those small things um, do make a difference. So today I challenge you with uh, what are your teaspoons of change that we can take in our personal lives, we can take from this conference and this opportunity back to our own universities in particular. Um, and, and I think it's always important to, to connect. The small things that we do do have a bigger picture to it all. Okay, they're small to us, but they actually go towards a much bigger picture of these sustainable development goals. And again, this is kind of more of a faith almost than, than a concrete facts and science, but we know that small changes do make a difference. Um, on the Teaspoons of Change website, I have many little ideas with me. I always carry around. I haven't, I haven't used bottled water for more than three years. And I lived in South Sudan and Pakistan and many places, but I always carry my water in a filter. Uh, I have my shopping bag with me at all times, so I'm not, not using plastic there. Uh, my hashi, <laughs> I don't use waribashi. Uh, I've been in Japan since September, and I've, I've, I used one pair of waribashi because I forgot my hashi. Uh, but I try and carry these around. They, they turn into chopsticks. And then simple things, you know, like my, my cup that I can take with me. I even have a bowl. So when I go to some places and get takeaway, I have a bowl that folds out. And the people will be like, okashi mm, done there, gaijin. Um, <laughs> but, but it does mean that these small things, you know, it's, it's more that I'm creating habits and trying to share that with others. And everyone's like a bit like, why, why would you bother, you know, taking your own bag? The plastic bags are free. It's like, well, you know, it's, it's okay, but that's, that's just what I tend to do because I want to make these uh, small teaspoons of change as much as possible. Um, and so there's uh, also a wonderful lyric from a uh, musician, actually, and he says, you know, are you a part of the pollution or are you a part of the solution? And this is the way that I try to view the world every single day. When I wake up, I'm trying to look at everything that I do. If I can have a choice, can I minimise the amount of harm that I do? And can I maximise the amount of help that I can do on a daily basis? And sharing that with others. And then there's another formula, a very mathematical formula, is that small actions multiplied by lots of people can and will create big change. And it's a fairly simple thing and it's, it's kind of quite altruistic. But, um, but these are the ideas. And I, I've given more than 700 presentations to 65,000 people in the past six or seven years. Uh, just sharing simple messages like this. And some people, not everyone lives in a tiny house, <laughs> but, um, but the fact that we kind of care about turning off our light switches, we care about carrying our bags with us when we go shopping, uh, eventually can make huge differences. And then an opportunity like today to switch our renewable energy to renewable energies, and these bigger teaspoons, tablespoons of change, um, is really important for us to support them. So if we're not the idea makers or the idea leaders, we need to be supporters and sharing that and, and asking um, our administrations, asking our government and these sorts of things to, to, uh, to encourage them to make good choices, good decisions and good actions. So I'll leave you uh, with the last little word here is that we can see a better world for everyone, everywhere and forever. And this is what I've learnt, you know, it shouldn't matter where we are born. If we have access and opportunity to simple things like clean water, being able to cool yourself and heat yourself, and these sorts of things. Uh, and this is the second tiny house I built. This is in, in Australia. Uh, and the thing for me is that it creates a wonderful community as well. This is, this is what I learnt from many developing countries, is that it's not just a house. You know, there's a connection to community about that as well. So it's a, about a common place and, and these sorts of things. And this is one of the wonderful things about working towards uh, a better and cleaner future for everyone is that it just generally feels good <laughs> um, around creating community and being part of a movement. Uh, my, my details are here, and obviously I'm, I'm here for the whole day today. Um, but thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you some